everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Jenny and I'm here today to give you my rankings for a book two prize round two I was a judge in the nonfiction group D category and um, I've seen the results video and I've decided to release my videos a little bit differently this time around I am releasing my ranking video first and then you will get a series of three reading vlogs that feature two books per vlog uh, and so I thought I would just switch it up this year if you're not familiar with the book two prize I will put a link down below for the channel so you can go and check it out um, it is uh, I think it's in its fourth year and so um, we are judging two categories of books this year fiction and nonfiction. six books go up against each other and then you rank them in your in your pref from your preference from one to six um, so in my group group D which I will show you right here um, I ha there was a very good mixture of books in this group I would say um, you had um, personal and social history memoir um, biography and uh, environmental and science-based works so it was a pretty good mixture of a group and what ended up happening for me is that I enjoyed all these books so I think this is the first time in any category that I've read in and this is my third year fourth year maybe it's five years old anyway uh, I've, I think this is my fourth time judging. So this was the first time where I didn't have a book that I hated in my group or that I really disliked, that I really didn't enjoy in my group. So it made the ranking more difficult and I had to come up with a criteria with which to rank these books. And the criteria I chose was the ones that would be the most appealing to the most people. So knowing the results now of my category i am pretty sure that a lot of the other judges that were in my category did not have this criteria um, i think that they looked at it in a very different way and uh, that's okay because i kind of knew when i ranked the books the way i did the books that i thought were going to go through and i was correct in my assumption so I'm going to talk you through the decisions that I made and my own personal preferences with these books. And uh, please let me know in the comments down below if you were either also judging this category and had a very different opinion or if you've read these books and would rank them differently because um, I'd love to chat about them with you. Okay, my number six book was We Don't Know Ourselves by Fenton O'Toole. Uh, this was a very long book. I listened to it on audio. It was a 22 hour audio book. And this is a personal history of Ireland that is also combined with economic, social, and um, gender and religion history. Uh, I thought that there were parts of this book that were really interesting and I was with the author as he took us from 1958, which is the year he was born, through to today, I guess. I, I think there was a thread at the beginning of the book where he would list the years and he would put specific um, moments in history into those years. And I felt that a lot of things in this book petered out near the end, and that was one of them. So the through line was very strong for the first, like 1958 to even the late 80s, the early 90s. And then things started to get a bit jumbled, and they didn't feel as clear or as um, connected as they had in the beginning of the book for me. And so, that really led also to me putting it at the number six spot because I just didn't feel like a it had a big enough appeal to enough people. If you're really interested in Ireland and a spe you know very specific points of Irish history, I would say you know check it out. But um, otherwise, I don't think it's that appealing to a big audience. And I also felt that he left out things that should have been included. 
That's just my personal opinion. So that's number six. Number five was How to Stand Up to a Dictator by Maria Ressa. I did enjoy this, and this was actually one of the books I voted for at the very beginning when we were voting for what books we wanted to be on the list. So I was very excited to read it. This is a memoir, uh, but mostly of her career. Now, she is a career-oriented woman, and so um, she's not going to have a lot of personal things to put in there, or maybe she chose which personal things she felt were relevant and which weren't. I'm not sure. But again, this book started off weaving her personal life into her professional life, and I thought it, that that went really well. And then somewhere in the book, in the middle, it shifted away from her personal life to becoming completely about um, the way social media has affected news because she's a journalist and her personal achievements professionally. Um, so winning the Nobel Prize for, liter for journalism, um, you know, dealing with the, the Philippines government being uh, basically trying to muzzle her and her um, online news source Rappler. And so it really moved away from personal. She still wove some personal in there, but for some reason it just wasn't as effective to me near the end of the book as it was at the beginning. And so I did enjoy it. I learned so much about the Philippines because I really didn't know much at all about the political climate of the Philippines. I didn't understand how um, important the Philippines are as a, an audience for social media and how they have influenced and, and understood so much of what happened with Brexit and the election of um, a certain someone in the United States and all these other things that were connected to um, the kind of error of, uh, of certain social media uh, places. So it's, it's, there's a lot in there that's really interesting, but I found that I would have preferred something that was a bit more personally reflective, I think. Um, I'm not sure how she would have done it, but that's what I was looking for. So I put that book in number five. Uh, number four, I put in Immense World by Ken Yong. And uh, I knew when I was reading this book that it would be in the top three for sure and that it would go forward. Um, I understand why. It's very well written for the most part. It is very readable as a science book um, and I can see that it appeals to a fairly wide audience. Now I am not a person that enjoys reading much about science so I knew that it wasn't a book for me. I knew that I wasn't the audience for that book and so I did enjoy learning about many of the animals and the traits that they were talking about and how our senses have evolved and how you know, different animals have senses that we can't even understand as humans because we don't have anything comparable. So all those things were really great. Um, but there were other parts of the book that I found to be strange, such as the way he did footnotes, which are really just asterisks that have more text down at the bottom. And I didn't really understand that format. I felt like you either put the notes at the end and let people choose to go read them later, or you include it in the main body of the text. You don't throw these little asides in there constantly for people to decide if they wanna read. So I started off reading all of them, and then near the end, I just started skipping them because I didn't want that extra text to read. Uh, I wanted to just get on with the, the, the main part of the book. If that was the important part, then it should have been included with the main part of the book. Um, and also, I just found some of the studies he, he shared to be um, a little bit boring and some of them um, just like some of the the scientists featured and things just just weren't as interesting as others and so um, you know while I feel it does have a wild appeal a wide appeal within science readers I think that science people who enjoy reading science are actually a small category <laughs> um, and I am not one of those people so I put it at number four, knowing full well it was gonna go through, and it did. Um, so my number three pick was, um, his name is George Floyd, by Robert Samuels and Toleruz Onirupa. And um, I personally thought that 
the way that the authors compiled George Floyd's life and shared the systemic racism that brought him to that fateful day in 2020, of, in June 2020, um, sorry, May 2020, was, was very well done. I thought they did a great job. It was very hard to read at times. Um, that is to be expected with the subject matter. And I also thought it was interesting to take such a recent moment in recent history and look at it again so soon, you know, and to think back to where I was at that time and the impressions that the whole, um, the murder of George Floyd had on me. I thought they presented him as a flawed individual, which he was, but someone that didn't deserve to die that day. Um, and that is exactly, you know, the way we should all look at him and, um, and seeing uh, also learning about the aftermath of his death and what his family went through and what they're still trying to do, what they're still trying to accomplish through government. Um, I thought that was also interesting. So I think because of the impact of George Floyd's life and death on the world, really, because I think it made a global impact, that that book has a mass appeal. And as a piece of history, that was, I think, represented very well. It's a really important book to have in your collection and to read and understand. And so um, his name is George Floyd, also advanced. My number two book was Paradise Falls by Keith O'Brien. Uh, this book was just so well written. Um, Keith O'Brien is really good at picking out characters in a nonfiction narrative and describing them to you as if they were you were reading fiction. Um, he is able to bring people alive and really give you a sense of their motivation and a sense of their um, what they're trying to accomplish so that you can get on their side or not. Uh, the Story of Love Canal, um, I had watched a documentary about it, I believe, years ago, so I was familiar with the story, but to read it from this perspective. I thought he just did a really great job of telling the story, telling you the different people involved, um, of, of explaining the impact without getting too bogged down in too many people or too many details. Um, so I just thought it was very well writ written. And if anyone is interested in learning more about the way that industry has uh, failed to keep people safe when they're trying to dispose of waste. I think this is, you know, a perfect book to read, to learn about that. And so my number one book was Dinners with Ruth by Nina Totenberg. And this book did not go through. <laughs> and I had a feeling when I put it at number one that it wasn't gonna go through and that other people probably didn't like it as much as I did. And uh, so I was disappointed that it didn't go through, but I kind of knew it wouldn't go through. And I just feel like this book has a big appeal. Um, I feel like if you're interested in ideas of friendship, if you're interested in ideas of um, women who were breaking down barriers in industry in the 1960s and the 1970s, um, if you're interested in learning about Nina Totenberg's career as a journalist and the important stories that she broke, including the Anita Hill story. Um, if you're interested in learning about the dynamics of a friendship and not just her friendship with Ruth Bader Ginsburg, but also her friendship with many, many other people, her colleagues, um, other Supreme Court justices, um, her relationships with her husbands. Um, I just think it's, it was very well done. She kept things concise. She wrote in a very approachable way. She um, made me care about a lot of people who I don't know, never will know, um, but I cared about their lives and who they were. Um, so I just feel like it was a really successful memoir. And I feel like perhaps the subtitle and the way this book is kind of marketed 
um, on the cover do it an injustice because I feel like it's actually much more, it has more depth and more nuance than is actually shown through the way it's presented, um, which is, I think, why I didn't want to read it. I re this was actually my least, the book I was least interested in out of all these books in my group. I read it first and I liked it the best. So, you know, what can you say? It's just, I think for me, um, I find female friendship a very important and underwritten subject. I feel like it's not explored enough. It's not given enough due because women traditionally under patriarchy were often pitted against each other to compete. Um, we are assumed to always want to one up each other and that there's only so much space for women at the top so we can't all lift each other up and this book is like the opposite of that it's trying to deconstruct a lot of those things it's trying to show the power that nina tonberg feels friendships have and it's trying to elevate that idea so that i think more women pursue it and she's not just talking about her friendships with women in this book either she's talking about friendships she had with men and she's also talking about friendships across party lines which i thought was really important in today's political climate in the united states and even in canada because you see a lot more division if you are conservative versus um left there's these ideas that there can't be any crossover there and you can't like each other and you can't discuss and you can't try to come to a middle ground. Um, and she very much was part of Washington DC at a time when that still was happening, when there was still respect, when there was still, um, um, you know, issues that the two party sides could see uh, through together. And I thought that that was a really beautiful reminder that a lot of people need right now because there's so much division and um, and a lot of extreme views that kind of overshadow, overshadow um, the reality that we're all human beings and that we all should be, you know, maybe we disagree on things, but ultimately we need to have a shared idea of of what we value as humans, you know, before we let all these other political ideologies influence us. So I thought all those things were really powerful messages that were positive and that were important for people to examine in themselves. And so that's why I really like that book. And that's why I put it number one. So those are my rankings for a book two prize round two nonfiction group D. I am not reading in round three. Um, but I probably will read for the final round. So um, please enjoy my vlogs as they come out. There will be um, three vlogs featuring two books in each vlog where I will go into much more detail about all these books if you're interested in learning about any more of them. And I will be back again soon with another video. Thank you so much for watching.